I feel like my pol political statement is my, is my personal statement in this case. That was one of the challenges. The political and the personal are connected there yeah. deeply. I didn't want to be, um, you know, preaching. And uh, that is one of the most important things, might I interrupt you, yeah. that I love about the work, Thank and you. that I love about your work, generally speaking, is there is nothing preachy in it. There is nothing, maybe now I'm being preachy in the way I'm I, talking I, I to like you, it. but there is nothing. <laughs> you are not preaching. I must say, the other evening, I had the best time of my life coming to your studio to hear you record your new song cycle. Do you always have so much fun when you are recording with your band? We try to, yeah. I mean, uh, I've always thought it should be uh, not a hassle, not impoverishing, and a pretty good time. So. And those guys that I play with, I've played with for a long time. How many years? Uh, I think seven years. And Who are they? Uh, Eben Levy is a guitar player, and uh, Ian Riggs is the bass player, and Vito Dieterle, who plays saxophone. Um, you know, I've never played a show since we got together without them. We have a spirit in common or something. You know, probably a little too sensitive. We probably all share that in common. Um, wry in some kind of way. When you say sensitive, yeah, what? Oversensitive, you know. Yeah, well, you... Well, insensitive in all of its glorious uh, meanings. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think sensitive there's a, I think there's a, a heart there to 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 what we do and um, how we all are in the world. You know, like many people who have a job, one fantasizes, and I fantasized about one day leaving my job. And when I found out that my job was leaving me, I felt betrayed, you know, like a spurned lover, um, which is absurd in some way, you know, because I, my, my job didn't, I guess, owe me, never had promised me a lifetime of love or security. One of the, the conceits of the show is, is that we, we say that the company has moved to Mars, which is... A great place to buy real estate. A great place to buy real estate. It's very cheap there. Which we don't make a, a big deal out of, but the, the reason I used Mars is because it didn't matter where the company was moving, but it felt like they were going to Mars. And for all intents and purposes, for those of us who could not imagine leaving, it might as well have been Mars. Oh, and would you say that the, the role of the artist is to somehow highlight those disparities, those frictions, that desperation? I, I remember Jean-Paul Sartre at one point said that he wrote theater in order to give a voice to his enemies. That is great. You know, I, there, I, will, I, will, I, will, I know few quotes, but I will give you back one, which is Eugene O'Neill, who had this quote, um, that said that he would basically write about anything and everything that he ever wanted to. And he wouldn't be influenced by anything except this. Did he know it to be true? Or better yet, did he feel it to be true? Um, and for me, that is, that is the role of, of, at least my role as an artist, I won't speak for other people's roles as an artist, but is to write about things that I feel to be true um, because uh, what we know to be true is, is usually a, 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 a problem creator, you know? What we feel to be true, how we're perceiving the event, is usually where solutions can eventually be unwound, you know? Whatever is happening, whatever has been happening between the Israelis and the Palestinians for all of this time, that's not about facts, you know? That's about how people feel about those facts. And so for me as an artist, I want to explore experiences and unveil the feelings of going through them, many of which are ridiculous, are ridiculous. I don't know what's down below, and I don't want to look. I'm hoping it's a puffy white cushion. 
Do, do you know what I'm talking about? The, the big, puffy, white, billowing cushion that catches us in this country if we fall. So that if something happens and things go south, my wife, my dog, my cat, they'll be okay. I understand that what's really down there might be the void. I'm choosing to imagine the cushion. Tell me a little bit about this show at Joe's Pub. Uh, Shanta Thake, who's the director of Joe's Pub and right. has been one of our great champions, uh, approached me last year and was like, do you want to do this? And I had to come up with an idea. My job was leaving town. And I was like, I got something to say about this. I love a job that it's time for me to move on. Maybe some of you have written this speech. Maybe some of you are under the impression that your job will always be there and you will be the one to someday walk away. You'll do it for 23 nights. 23 nights. I'm coming to at least seven. Fantastic. Um, and you're recording it now. Spoken yeah, we'll have an album that'll, that will be mostly just the songs, a couple of, of pieces of text from the show, um, but it will be a consolidated version of the show. I, I always loved storytelling, and I think I always loved the troubadours, you know. Um, I grew up, my dad would play guitar around the house, and. Uh, we would uh, hear Woody Guthrie songs. Any ones in particular? Uh, you know, this piece, I turned to, before I wrote it, I spent some time with the Dust Bowl ballads. Which it's are incredible. 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 And is really like one of the first concept albums. Right. Uh, those songs on the Dust Bowl ballads, if you listen to them today, half of them could be written about today. They're incredibly precious. Nothing um, has changed. Yeah, unfortunately. One of the big realizations of my life as an artist was that I'm, uh, you know, a relatively small person <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, that my uh, a relatively small person. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm a small person. I'm interested in uh, what's coming up to eat, and uh, in not getting my feelings hurt, and and you know, getting good stuff out of the world. I mean, I'm. And part of it was because I. Um, the way I decided to be as an artist was somebody who would um, support themselves doing other things uh, in order to buy a level of freedom to do the kind of work that I wanted to do, as opposed to perhaps pursuing a faster track that would be really doing work for somebody else. Um, and so my life became full of small things. Uh, I am interested in the big things. But I uh, oriented my life to be full of the little things. And so if there are big things that I have to say now, and, I, and this piece is trying to say some big things, it is about the accumulated details of somebody who's trying to like, you know, make a living and uh, do the stuff that makes them feel good and passionate and and uh, take care of the people that they love. And one might say through the accumulation of little things, yeah. your piece by aggregation becomes a big thing. I, I hope so. A big so. deal. And with an election looming, the kind of critique you offer of our system may, may have incredible value which will accumulate. I hope so. I hope so. And, and my, I feel like my pol political statement is my, is my personal statement. The political and the personal are connected there yeah. deeply. I didn't want to be, um, you know, preaching. You're not preaching. Yeah. But you are speaking from a point of, of, uh, of, of pain and also humor. You know, I had moments when I was writing the piece when I felt preachy. And preachy would mean making a point? Yeah, vitriolic. You know, when I, when I would, it, you'd get angry. Anger, anger is a part of the um, experience um, of having something you love taken away from you. So when the company let you go, they also got rid of your place 
where you could go. Mm -hmm. there, 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 is, there is anger in the piece, but any time I would sort of uh, use that as the vehicle to try to communicate, vitriol or a, a, a kind of dogmatic um, uh, uh, speech or something, the piece became less. Um, and any time I tried to, to bring it through my own experience, even if I didn't say it directly, the political implications of something, um, and there are political things said it outright, but any time that I tried to use the personal as the vehicle, then I felt like the political was in the air. You know, it, was in the, it, it became in the molecules. I mean, there are things, again, that we say sort of outright, but for me, like, the great... Such as, such as what? Well, the, the first uh, song of the show about, about uh, the third day of October in the year 2008, um, you know, it's, it's very pointed, uh, a very ironic thank you um, that I am offering to my country for basically feeding America to the banks. That's sort of the idea of the song, um, that, which is sort of something that I felt had happened. Um, there are other um, moments that, that incorporate, sort of incorporate. Incorporate, yeah. But yeah. even incorporate, I try to, the, that song is all about, you know, I'm going to solve our, our problem. Um, and by our problem, I mean my wife's and I problem, the problem that I'm creating by not moving with this company, um, of how we're going to live by incorporating and that that is going to give me all the rights of a corporation. Um, I can limit my liability, you know, I'll, I'll get a board of directors and... Uh, because that's what we do in America. Yeah, right. And uh, I'll give myself some tax incentives. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, you know, and then the, the end of the song sort of suggests that if every family would incorporate, you know, as a perverse prescription uh, for, for how to empower people. Uh, if every individual family would incorporate, then we could all maybe take on the big corporations. But really, you know, there's this whole discussion right now in America about our corporations people because they have most of the best rights of people and, and few of the responsibilities. And, and what is basically kind of a bad idea, which is something I like to use uh, a lot of times to explore um, certain ideas, to not make myself look like necessarily like the most sympathetic person, to tap into that smallness. Um, there's a song in the piece called Aging Middle Class Parents, uh, which is, um, again, a lot of the piece is about me trying to figure out what am I going to do, you know? It's one of the solutions that I come up with uh, to solve our problems is that I'm going to have a competition between my two sets of parents um, to see which one of them wants my wife and I to come live with them. And uh, in the song, we're not exactly the best house guests. Take out the garbage. Yeah, we'll take out the garbage from time to time, time, and we'll let them pay all the bills. Uh, and actually, in the in the piece, my my wife decides that's not such a great idea, and my parents agree. Um, <laughs> So it's a win-win for everybody. Um, but I was trying to explore that kind of desperation of, of, like, literally, your mind races. Well, what? I guess we could go and move in with my, one, my parents? What I try to do in the show is to sort of show those vulnerabilities in, in, in perceiving things well. You know, the, the fact that I often don't read things correctly. Uh, and that really what I'm responding to is not the truth but is my feelings about the truth. But trying to uh, explore those places where perception is kind of hot and resonating and, and distorting the world, um, distorting the reality. You know, you have this feeling and you're like, this is, this is how it is. You know, I'm telling myself, I'm not gonna move there, it's Mars, you know. And the truth is, you know, much more subtle than that. It isn't, they weren't moving to Mars. In some way, how do you yeah. transform your misreading of a situation into something that, though read badly during your 
life of making decisions, then through your errors, people actually are able to see the truth of a situation which sucks. A little song and dance. A little song you know? and dance, a little yeah. humor. A little um, humor. Humor yeah. is very important. Dear staff, it's me, the final sandwich in the conference room. And I know, yes, I know that somebody wants me. Thank you very much. It's our humanity, you know, humor is. Um, or it is uh, the window through which we can often access it. Um, because it provides us with what? You know, I, because it, it I, I, I'm at a, uh, this is gonna be embarrassing, but I'm at a stage now where I have just a small enough belly that when I laugh, I can feel it jiggle. And every time I laugh now, uh, I, I, it reminds me of being a little kid, I, like aware of my body, my body being seized by sort of the spirit of the world. Um, and it is, uh, yeah, it is the happiest access I know to my humanity, to other people's humanity. And I feel like it, uh, it allows us to experience things uh, in a way that is not as caustic um, as the world often, you know, feels. I got a place to go in the morning Going to work I got a place to go when 